spot kick as it finishes. Arsenal 3, Liverpool 2. That result puts Arteta's side back to the top of the Premier League table. So much to discuss. Uh, let's welcome in, shall we? Luis Garcia with us, as is Frank Leboeuf and Julian Laron. But regarding the mentions in my Twitter feed, there's only one man we can start today's show with, Stevie, on oh, reflection of this. Much, yeah. Well, he's, he's desperate to get rocking again. Uh, no, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, I think I can sum it up pretty quickly and easily for you. I thought Liverpool were the best side from the first goal that Arsenal scored till they scored the second. In between... Liverpool were, for me, the better side. Unfortunately, second half, no question, Liverpool at no stage looked to have dominated any period of play. None at all. So, first half, can't argue, not happy with the scoreline, obviously, but the second half, Arsenal were way better. Liverpool, as I said, never really, other than the goal, which to me came against the run of play, uh, never really, never showed up for the second period. Some Vassal's football I thought was really good today. Excuse me. Yeah. Oh, that's, okay? that throat. that's your throat from last week. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think similar to the Tottenham game, they lost their way a little bit, particularly during that first half, after a good start and a good finish. I did think they were better in the second half. I think what was telling for me, amongst all the other things that happened in the game, at 2-2, Klopp put on a centre-half for a centre-half, and a holding midfielder. And, and that kind of... Taking off Salah, you, you kind of you start yeah, player in the process. I, but I just think that was telling for me that at 2-2, it's a centre-half and a holding midfielder coming on, which kind of tells you all you need to know about which way the game was swinging. Uh, but I thought Arsenal were good for the... Good for the three points, no, no doubt about it. Uh, Jules, you were at this game, and, and the kind of the 2-2 scoreline was significant, wasn't it? Because in the past, maybe you see Arsenal crumble, the Emirates silence. We kind of saw the opposite this time round. Yeah, that's right. And we saw the same against Spurs last weekend where Spurs came back in the first half as well, a bit like Liverpool today. But then Arsenal started the second half on the front foot like they did today. Odegaard has that big chance to make it 3-1 even before, the, um, even before the, 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 the Firmino goal. And even if it was 2-1 compared to the 1-1 against Spurs, I thought once again the reaction from Arsenal after... After considering that goal was, was very important, the character, I think Stevie is right, the first half Liverpool in that very brave, we have to say, 4-4 four four formation, were really good and they played some really good stuff, but defensively they were always going to struggle in that formation. I mean, I, I admire Klopp's courage in a way and, and how brave he was to start with that formation and only leave Thiago and Henderson as the two midfielders because it was always going to be a time where they were going to tire and then as soon as they tired and we saw that in the second half, they got overrun and then you can change it and put Henderson on the right and bring Fabinho on and go 4-4-2, but it's too late, I think. And, and um, unfortunately, I think Klopp's decisions today overall, I'm just, I'm about, over 90 minutes, probably cost his team at least a point. Frank, how impressed were you with Arsenal today? Uh, very much, very much in a term of confidence because, as everybody said, uh, they were struggling the first half. They scored a good goal. I think Liverpool was quite arrogant in the last two minutes of the uh, first half when they went out and in too many, in, uh, with too many individuals and they, they, would have, they should have secured a little bit more, you know, after that action that they had and the counter-attack and the goal that they conceded. But Arsenal, I thought they were in a big danger and that was the scenario that I was feeling that uh, Arsenal scoring a first goal, then suffering and Liverpool showing that they were better. But Liverpool first didn't perform enough and well enough, but Arsenal, the courage that they had, the, the consistency on their confidence that they have, make them quite un invulnerable. They absolutely, uh, they impressed me. They impressed me a lot in a way that they never gave up. They always thought that they would be able to, uh, to change the result. And after the Firmino equalizer, I thought, oh, that's going, to be, uh, that's going to be difficult for them because the first half that they had. No, they became better because Firmino uh, equalized. That's, that's how much they impressed me in that matter. Luis, which individuals for Arsenal impressed you today? From Arsenal? Yes, you can talk about I Arsenal. The, 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 the Liverpool team. ways, is that right? <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. No, actually, actually, I was going to to, to give a lot of credit to to Arsenal because I I enjoy the way they, these Arteta side is drilled. 
I enjoy uh, the, com the commitment, the determination of this team. You could see even that they, they were struggling the first 45 minutes. They have an idea. They go fantastic wide, wide players who are just ready to start running and they are so dangerous. In the moment they, they, they uh, are seeing a player from midfield, Shaka, Pate, or, or White, I've seen it. Odegaard, he didn't get involved much. They just start making the runs on the spaces. And that's very difficult when you play with a high defense like Liverpool was playing today. And in the moment that they have to do a transition in defense, they just get compact in just three seconds. It's just fantastic the way they, they are working at the moment. And that has to be because they've been working very well in trainings because this uh, team, not many months ago, it was broken in pieces. It was broken into size every single game. And now they look very solid, very confident. And they show it in the second half where they overrun Liverpool because they uh, Liverpool ran out of legs. So it was very impressive to see them performing against a very good Liverpool that I think that it was at least for a big part of the game. And it was just in the second half where the, they couldn't manage that intensity that Arsenal put on the field. You, you think about it as well. Arsenal didn't really have a huge threat from the full-back position because Ben White, who's played there almost all season as a, as a centre-half, mm. and Tommy Asso, who is a full-back, is a right full-back. Uh, so he, whilst they got forward occasionally, I mean, White got forward a bit more, but they got nothing from uh, the, the full-back position in terms of crosses into the box. So that was sort of negated. It wasn't Zinchenko or Tierney and a natural right back getting forward. It was just the it was the Arsenal wide players backed up by a couple of solid centre uh, uh, defenders in that position. So that was less of a threat for Liverpool to worry about. You know, you think about Arsenal with Zinchenko in that side and Tommy Asso in his, his normal position. But the other head scratcher for me is, from a Liverpool perspective, is Fabinho. I, I, I mean, I, I, maybe I'm just missing something. Mm. Even if he hasn't had the best of seasons, he's the only natural defensive midfielder they have. Thiago is not. Thiago is a fantastic footballer. But he's unlikely to, yeah. to break the play up and cover the fullbacks and cover the centre backs. How many games has Man City gone into without, over the years, Fernandinho or Rodri? One, they tried to do it, it was a Champions League final and lost. They rarely have ever gone in without one of those holding midfielders. It's a bit of a mystery to me. I don't know. Thank you very much for watching ESPN FC on YouTube. For more highlights, analysis and exclusive content, be sure to subscribe.